Hey, how's it going guys? In this Python tutorial, we are going to learn how to import records from a CSV file to Microsoft SQL Server. So the script can be adapted to import data set from an Excel file, a text file, or any data file that you are going to be working with. So it's not only limited to CSV file, I'm using CSV file just because uh, this is the most commonly used data file today. And the database is not limited to Microsoft SQL Server. You can use this script for other database systems as well, such as MySQL, Oracle, or even Microsoft Access. Now let's take a look at the data set source. So I'll be using uh, this data set, real-time traffic incident reports. And here we have an export button, which I can export the data set to a CSV file. And that'll be the file that I'll be using to import uh, the data set to my SQL Server database system. And you can download this data set from data.austintexas.gov. I'll post the link in the description below so that we can also download the data set as well. Now let's take a look at the table itself. So this table has nine columns. Traffic ID, publish date, issue reporter, location, latitude, longitude, address. And there are two more. So here, let me display all the fields, status, status dates. And we have 196,000 records that we'll be importing in this exercise. And here's a preview of the table. I already downloaded the CC file. So I named the uh, uh, file, real-time traffic incident reports. And this the extra file. Now we have the data source taken care of we need to work on our, our database system. So I'm using Microsoft SQL Server just because I know this database system the best. And here's the uh, SQL statement to create the table that will be storing the data set. And I named the table Austin Traffic Incident. And here let me recreate this table. If I run the slide statement, we have our table with zero record. Let's go into our Python editor. I'll be using PYPYODBC library to connect to my SQL Server database system. I'll name this uh, library ODBC. Oh, and you can install this library by using the command pip install PYPYODBC. And to clean out the data, I'll be using pandas library oh and this one will be pip install pandas and those are the only two libraries that i'll be using for this task all right so let's create our driver variable for sql server the driver name is going to be sql server if you don't know the driver name for your database system on windows you can use uh, the odbc data source tool if you go to drivers, here's a list of drivers that are available on your PC. And the driver name on the name column is the driver name that you'll be inserting to the driver variable. Next, we need to assign the server name. To get the server name in SQL Server, so here we'll type select followed by 2M symbol, server name. And I'll return the server name. And I'm going to copy paste the server name. And the next item is the database name. So I'll name this variable database name. And my database is going to be called JJ. If we look at our SQL Server Object Explorer, so this is my database name that I'll be uh, connecting to. I also have a different database called YouTube. Now we have created our variables that we need to provide when we connect to SQL Server database system. Now we need to import the data using the pandas library. And since my data set is stored in a CSV file, so I'm going to grab the file name. And from the pandas library, I'll insert the method readCSV followed by the file path. And I'll save the data set as DF. And this is going to be step one, importing data. 
set font CSV. And step number two is we're going to do some very basic data cleanup. Now let me import the library first. So run these two lines. And I'll import the data set to my uh, data frame object. Now if I print the DF object, that's going to return 196,257 records. Let me open the CSV file so we can take a quick look at the table itself. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right, so the next step is we need to figure out which column do we want to import to our database system. If you look at my table creation statement, I'm only inserting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm only inserting seven columns from the CSV file. And the last column created is the date time when a record gets created. Oh, and here I need to uh, provide a default date time value. So I'm going to fix the uh, SQL statement uh, a little bit. So I'm going to assign default. I'm going to insert the get dates function to uh, insert the current timestamp. I'll recreate this table. All right, now let's go back. If I take a look at this CSV file, I want to import traffic report ID column, publish dates, issue reporter, location, and I'll skip latter two and longer two columns just because I can uh, create a function to extract the value from location column. Address, status, and status date. So those are the seven columns I want to import to my table in SQL Server. But first, we need to clear some data. So from the CSV file, we have two date time column, status date, and publish date. If I simply create the data from publish, oops, publish date, it will grab the first five records. And noticing that the data type is an object. That means when I try to export the date time value to SQL Server, it's going to recognize as regular string. I need to convert that to uh, actual data and value that a single server recognizes. And to do that, in pandas, there's a function called to date time. And this is actually one of my favorite functions when I work with uh, dates or time values. So we can simply uh, insert the published date value to this function. And that will actually convert the uh, string to date time uh, format. So here, let me show you. If I run this thing right here, just give it a second. Now we have date time 64 data type of our values. And that's what we want. So that's something that we can uh, convert to the format that SQL Server recognizes. And here I'm going to type that DT. And this is going to convert the value this daytime 64 uh, format value to the proper daytime format. Now we can convert the formatting for the formatting pattern. And it's going to be uh, uppercase Y hyphen lowercase m hyphen lowercase d. I also want to grab the time value. So it's going to be hour, minute, and second. And we're going to replace the current publish date column with this uh, new set of values. Now let me run line 12. Now if I create the publish date column again, and this what the, uh, oops, so here I made a mistake. 
So the S didn't get, oh, I forgot the percentage symbol. So here let me re-import the data set to my data frame object. And you know I made a mistake before, now I fix it. So I can uh, basically do the same for the other daytime column. I remember the name was uh, status date. All right, so I'll run these two lines uh, individually. Now the next data cleanup test is remove all the bad data. I already worked with this data set before. If we look at the location column, and there are some empty uh, fields, not fields, uh, empty values. So if I do a search and look for empty string, um, row uh, 117, so here's one of the empty location. To remove bad records, I will uh, reference the data frame object, and I'll use the job method to delete the records. And to create the bad records, I'll use the query method. Inside the query method, we'll supply the column name in string uh, format. So the column name is location. You can use the is now function. So this will return all the records where location column value is empty. Now I'm going to insert a pipe symbol and the pipe symbol represents all operator. And I want to insert another condition. So I want to reference status column this time. And I know some of the uh, values are empty, so it's the same function is now to create those empty uh, records. And here I need to type that index to return the uh, index number of those rows. And I'll set the in place value to two to replace the uh, records to this uh, DF diaphragm object. All right, so that's the cleanup test. And step number two, actually this will be step number three, but I'm going to name those uh, step 2.2. For step 2.2, we want to specify the columns we want to import. I'll create a list object. I'll name this object columns. I'm going to type all the columns I want to import. So the first column is traffic report ID and sync the ID is uppercase yep uppercase here I'm going to just copy all the columns it should column headers I'm going to just copy and paste oh actually I forgot I can there's a, another way I can do it so I can reference the Data from an object. I can set the columns property. Let me see. All right. I'll grab this list. And I'll just copy and paste. And I'll remove latter two and longer two from my list. Here I'm going to create another data frame object, except that this object is going to contain the records and the columns I want to export to SQL Server. So from DF object, I'll insert the column names. Now I'm going to run these three lines. Oh, it should, should be, uh, I think I, I ran line 12 and 13 before. Now I'm going to run line 21 to 24. If I print DF data object, that will give us 194,221 records and seven columns. Because when we use ODB's library to insert records to a database system, we need to provide nest list object. So that means we need to convert our data from data set to a list object. And to do that, 
I will convert df data data set to values first, then to list. Now if I run line 26, oh, this should be plural, so I made a mistake. This should be records. Now if I print the first 10 records of the records object, that will convert each row into a list. Now we are finished preparing the data. Now we need to work on creating the SQL Server connection to communicate with Python. So this is going to be step three. Actually, let's do step 3.1. Create SQL Server connection string. It is always good practice to reuse your code. So here I'm going to create a function. So I'll name this function connection string. And this function is going to have three parameters, driver, server name, database name. Inside this function, we need to construct our connection string. Oops, this should be a string. And I'm creating an F string, so just be aware of that. And the string is going to be driver is equals to, and here we need to insert two curly brackets followed by the argument name, semicolon at the end, server. We only need to insert one set of curly bracket and followed by the server name argument and database one set of curly bracket followed by database name argument and also need to make sure that we set the trust connection property to yes in case if you are logging into your SQL server with a user ID and a password they need to insert two more properties so the first property is uh, actually not password. The first property is going to be username. Then you will type your username ID and followed by the semicolon. So username. And the second property is going to be password. And here's where you're going to insert your password. And since I don't need to provide my user uh, credential, so I'm going to delete those two properties. And I want to return the connection string. And here I said made a mistake. So this should be three sets of curly bracket, not two. Now let me create this function in memory. Now if I insert the connection string function, and I'll provide my driver, server name, and database. Should this should be server name, database name. And here I'm getting driver is not defined. Oh, this should be server. Okay, so everything looks good. So this one I'm looking at the driver value, server value database name and trust connection is yes. In case if you are wondering uh, when you are creating a connection string for a different database system, you can go to this site connectionstrings.com. Um, this website has a list of all the available database systems connection string reference. Now let's go back. Now we can create our connection object and this will be st step 3.2 create database connection object. Actually, I'm going to name this instance. I'll grab the ODBC library dot connect. And all we need to do is we just need to provide our connection string to the connect method. And I'll name the output connection C O N N. And here I need to insert try except block. Just because 
um, it's very likely that you're going to run into some sort of error in the beginning. I'm going to insert the first handler, except ODBC database error. Let's see. And if this error happens, I want to print a message database error. Then I want to print the error message. And if it's other than the database error, then I want to just print a very generic uh, error message. And this will be connection error. I'll print the air message. Now let's run this uh, code block. And here's my first error. Data source name cannot found no default driver. Let me take a look. So I ran into this issue yesterday. So let me replace the single quote with double quote. Oops, let me try again. Okay, now this time it worked. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the connection string. So if we print the connection object, and that return us PYPYODBC connection object. Now what about connection created? We now need to create a cursor connection. And this will be step 3.3, .3, create a cursor connection. And again, I'm going to insert a try accept block. And this time I'm going to use exception to capture all the errors. Inside the try block, I will instantiate my cursor connection. If you don't know what a cursor is, a cursor is basically an identifier associated with all the rows or records in a database system. And to insert our records, we need to prepare a SQL statement to do that. So I'll name the SQL statement, SQL insert. And the insertion statement is pretty straightforward. So insert into, followed by the table name, Austin Traffic Insert. Oh, actually, uh, here let me remove the default uh, statement. I want to recreate my table. I'll show you why in a second. Here for the values argument, we have seven parameters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth column is going to be the date and time when a record is created. And for that, I'm going to insert the function inside this uh, SQL statement. And the reason is because if I decide to use this SQL statement to insert the default date timestamp, I need to manually type the column name. Now let me run the SQL insert uh, string. From the cursor option, there's a method called execute menu. And this method allows us to execute a batch of values from an array. And the first parameter is the SQL statement. And the second parameter is the nest list array object. It would create that before. Once all the records got inserted to our table, we need to commit the transaction. However, if we run into an error, then we need to roll back the uh, transaction. And finally, 
if the uh, transaction is successful, then we know we have finished uh, inserting all the records. Now we can close everything. So we need to close the cursor connection and the connection connection. The reason I didn't want to close the connection object and the cursor object uh, inside this air block is because when we run into an air, I want to keep all the connections open. That way we can reattempt to insert the records again. Now this is everything we need to write for the Python code. Now let's give it a try. So I'm going to save this script. I'm going to press F5 to run the script. Looks like the script has finished. And we should uh, insert print message to indicating that the test is complete. Now let's go to our SQL Server database. Now I'm going to run a select statement. And looking at this table, I have 194,221 records in this uh, Austin traffic incident table. All right, so this is everything I want to share in this video. If you have any feedback or any comment, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.